So for piecewise functions, right, I've kind of written out here a little list of guidelines for you. So there's two things we're going to do with a piecewise function. You're either going to be given the equation and we're going to be asked to evaluate it at certain values. So we might say like what is g of 2, right? So if you're plugging in values of x into a piecewise function, piecewise functions are made up of um, well, they can be made up of multiple pieces, but they're, they're structured with two columns. Right? The equation is in the first column, and then the domain of that, or the intervals of where that equation is valid is in the second column. So if I want to know what g of negative 2 is, you start in the right column and you find out, well, which one of these intervals includes negative 2? And I can see for this one it's right here. Then you go across the row to the corresponding equation, and that's where you plug negative 2 into. If we want to draw a piecewise function, well then we start in this column, we start with the first equation, and we sort of draw it lightly with a pencil or a dotted line. Then we look at the interval, <clears throat> and this would be from negative 3 to negative 1, and we only shade or make the line nice and solid, right, draw it in for those values, and then we lightly erase everything else. Then we draw the next piece, and then we crop off the values we don't need of that, and the next piece. So. I really recommend using a pencil and then you can always use like a pen or a marker or something to color in the pieces you want to keep um, so we can do this. All right, so we're actually going to work with one of these and I'm going to show you how both of these techniques work. So what we have here is a piecewise function and the first thing they want us to do is sketch this. Right? So I actually have a graph of this function. And the first equation is the equation of a line. So I can see that the slope of that line is 3, the y-intercept is 9, right? But since I don't see a 9 on this graph, it might just be easier to plot a few points and connect the dots. So if I plug in negative 3, I'm going to get 0, right? Because negative 3 times 3 is negative 9, and negative 9 plus 9 is 0. But also notice in the interval here where negative 3 was, 3 is not included. So that means when I draw it, negative 3, 0, I need to put an open circle there, right? I'm not going to let it exist at 3. Right, so then I'm going to plug in um, negative 1. So negative 3 times negative 1 is negative 3 plus 9 is 6. So 1 is included, so I have a solid circle here. So I could have used some intermediary points if I wanted to, but since this is just a line, all I need is two points on the line to draw this. So I have a little mini ruler, folded piece of paper works great as a st straight edge, but I'm just going to connect my two lines. So there's the first piece of this equation. The second piece is a quadratic, right, x squared, shifted down one unit. It's only valid from negative 1 to 2. But notice those endpoints are not included, so we're going to draw open circles at the end. So if I plug in negative 1, I'm going to get negative 1 squared, which is positive 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, so negative 1, 0 is my first point. I'm going to plug in 0 just because it's easy here. 0, we get negative 1, so the function does exist there. And then at 2, if I plug in 2 here, 2 squared is 4, 4 minus 1 is 3, so this quadratic cuts off, and we can see it goes down and then connects up. So that's the middle piece. The last is a line. It only exists from 3 to 4. So at 3, 3 minus 4 is negative 1, and it does exist there. At 4, we get 0, and so this is the graph of my piecewise function. It's a piece of a line, a piece of a quadratic, and a piece of a line. So then we want to know, well, what is the domain of this function? So for domain, I'm going to read the function from left to right. And you want to be careful about your domain, okay? So in this particular problem, 
the function, we start from the left, the first time we see any activity on this graph is at negative 3. But negative 3, and I'm going to write this up here so we can fit it all on the camera, right? Negative 3 is not included, so I have to put parentheses. Then the graph exists all the way to here, right? And we're down at negative 1, and it looks like it stops. So I could say, this is, I'm going to show you, well, I'm not going to show you a wrong answer, but the most common wrong answer was somebody would say, well, let's just go to negative 1 included, right? But then the problem is the next piece of the graph picks up at negative 1 not included. So if I were to write that out, this would be every student's favorite thing to do, right? They would just give me the interval for each individual piece, right? Well, here's the problem with this. What you're saying here is the function exists at negative 1. The function does not exist at negative 1. This doesn't make any sense. It either is in the domain or it's not in the domain. So the function absolutely exists at negative 1. It's up here at 6, right? So then everywhere after 1, it still exists, right, until you get to x equals 2. Then there's an actual gap here where nothing's happening. So the first interval of our domain should be negative 3 to 2 and 2 is not included because of this open circle. So whenever you see a jump like this, you need to check, does the function actually exist there? And in this case, it did. So we just kept the interval going, right? Here, there's an actual gap in values. So then we use a union. And the function does exist at 3 and all the way to 4. So this is 3 to 4 included. Part C wants to know the range. So for the range, we read bottom to top of graph. So the first y value we encounter is down here at negative 1, and it's included. So that's going to be the beginning of our range. Then we keep going up. We've got values all the way to 0. We have some open circles here at 0, but I found two y values at 0. So 0 is absolutely in the range, right? This piece of the graph keeps going up to 3 and stops. But this piece of the graph goes all the way from 0 to 6. So anywhere along here from negative 1 to 6, I can find a y value, right? So the range is negative 1 to 6, and both of these endpoints are included because I can actually find values of x that will give me those endpoints. Now I want to make a note on the practice on your own problem for this particular section. So this piecewise graph that you're going to try to write the function for um, has a semicircle in it. And we actually technically aren't testing you on circles on this exam. So you still need to try to do this problem, but I'm going to give you the equation for this particular piece of the graph so that way you can um, do it. So right here from negative 1 to 1, this semicircle right here, the equation is negative square root of 1 minus x squared. So don't stress on this piece. You should include it in your final answer, but you should definitely be able to create the equations of the other pieces and then find the domain and range.